See you've insisted on betrothing yourself to some low-born commoner. You always were a rebellious child. But I suppose there's nothing to be done. There's one thing you're missing, however. An heir. Normally, I'd wait until your wedding is over, but frankly, we don't have the time. You need some... One young, whose loyalty is assured. A child of your own would do the trick, even if they're a bastard, or the youngest of your many cousins. I'm pretty sure I have a bastard child laying around here somewhere. <laughs> the child won't be happy, but they're just as keen to avoid a civil war as we are. They'll legitimize the bastard without much fuss. I will meet with the Archbishop tomorrow. Let's see. Make it a red wedding. I should probably try PC Twitch. Small screen doesn't help my eyes too well. Let's see. Counts, barons and counts surround you. You're gonna have a bastard. Shocking. Uh, listen. You, uh, my throne is surrounded by oily gladiators. And my oily wife. Still. Okay. Look. I am in love with Jane. Uh, we've got... We've got a thing going. Okay, it's an arrangement. We're both happy. The gladiators are more like uh, marital aides. What happens on the throne stays on the throne. Well, it mostly happens on the floor. For weeks you've searched uh, for a witch or a warlock that can treat your dark and bloody dreams. Knowing the church would be outraged if they find out, you must take discreet action in your witch hunt. You wish you could make no, uh, Noble choose to defect to a loyalist mid-scheme? That would be cool. Let's see. I don't want to send the armies. Let's see. I'm going to ask the traders and traveling merchants for information. You have your city watch question every trader coming through the capital. Your loyal nobles do the same. Through the rumor mill, you hope to find some whisper of what you're searching for. You can only hope a clue turns up soon. Not only are the dreams getting more frequent, they're more vivid. You're starting to doubt their dreams at all. Okay, really am switching to mobile now. Back on PC, switching, yeah. Back on PC shortly. Okay. I won't go into the next vote without you. Speaking of which, uh, if you are just joining the stream, if you want to play too, all you have to do is type exclamation join, followed by your preferred pronoun, and you can be thrown on to uh, any of the noble lists, and you can join in. There's no pressure to stick around to the end or anything like that. You just hop in and play, and when you get bored, you can leave. We won't judge. Will you continue this generation, by the way? Never played multi-generations. I will. I will definitely stick around for one more. We got kind of a late start, but uh, Saturday night is party night, and... Uh, I stick around if everyone else does. If no one else sticks around, then I just go play something else. I'm here, getting cat treats ready. Nice. Good. Kitties deserve treats. In the darkest depths of the eastern forest, Countess Applerponk has gathered her fellow plotters around a mossy stone obelisk. Some of our bribes have been accepted, but not enough. Queen is paying the palace watch well enough that their loyalties aren't easily swayed. 
So, we have some of the watch in our pocket. Isn't that enough? Nothing to do for the rest of the evening, so I'll watch. Nice. I'm trying to spend the money. Y'all calm down. Yeah. I, I mean, I made a fortune in the crab business. No, not yet. We can't make a move until we're sure we won't be discovered. The Count's aim is to lower the treasury to 1500 or less. Ah, oh, finally. Um... Hmm. I want to lower defiance, but man, that is costly. Please bribe. I'll be nice. Grab business was good. Sad it suddenly bottomed out like that. Yeah, weird. Alright, okay, okay. Yeah, don't rebel. If you don't rebel, I will bribe you both. Alright. Money is low. We're in the East. Royal wedding. Yeah, let's let's go back to the wedding with Jane. The wedding to Jane is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Commoners travel from every corner of the realm to attend. For a week and a day, the capital is one giant party. Many nobles refuse to attend event. the event. Even now, they're still furious you're marrying a commoner. On the day of the ceremony, the streets are packed and St. Bridget's Cathedral is nearly empty. But when you walk down the aisle to see Jane waiting by the altar, her face lit up by the most radiant smile, suddenly nothing else matters. Do you, do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. I thought it would be really funny if there was an option to leave her, but I don't think I would. Then I pronounce, then I pronounce you wife and wife. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast, and after the feast, a dance. The nobles refuse to speak to Jane, preferring to mutter amongst themselves about her lowborn status. By the time you find yourself alone with Jane, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. So here we are at last, married. After all those years of sneaking around, can you believe it? It's like a dream. A most wonderful dream. What did you do to get the nobles to agree with to this? Oh, they hate me now. Well, I love you. And I'm the queen consort now, which means I'm far more important than they are. True, true. Let's stay up till sunrise. She beams at you. I'd love nothing more. For the first time in forever, you have nothing to do but enjoy each other's company. You have so much to talk about that you're still awake at dawn. Eventually, Jane drifts off to sleep with her arm around you and her head on your shoulder. This is actually the sweetest thing. Alright, horror in the east or a call for apprentices. I'm curious about the horror in the east. Is it the abomination? Your Majesty, a monster has been stalking my farms at night, smashing down the doors of cottages and feasting on the peasants inside. How many victims? Dozens, Your Grace. And a few have survived and only a few have survived the attacks. Why does this game make choices for us? Wish they were many non-group made choices throughout the game. Yeah. That would be awesome. Why does everything bad happen to me? The survivors tell a garbled story 
about gleaming fangs amid a mountain of blood-soaked fur. Any weird Al Yankovic fans? Because that totally reminded me of the song, Why Does This Always Happen to Me? Let's see. Send the Count's army to deal with the abomination. Offer a substantial bounty on the monster, or no concern of ours. Uh, bounty on the monster. That's the iron choice. It'll raise authority. I don't listen to, to Al, but I like two of his songs. Can't remember the names. Wait, and Nerdy are my favorite. Oh, vote B, vote B, vote B. And unanimous. The bounty is placed, so hopefully some enterprising monster slayer will claim it soon. Rebellion ha halted on both accounts. Thank you. Call for Apprentices. One of his songs turned into a um, MAP anim animatic? Collaborative animatic with uh, many, many artists. Oh, yeah, that was uh, Tacky. I think. Collaborative animatic. Maybe? Sorry. Animatic was. No, no, that was just a bunch of cameo appearances. I I fangirl pretty hard for Weird Al Yankovic. Many, many artists. What was that? Bad news, my liege. Meddling Wizard has set up shop in Brusseldorf. I believe it is Athmoral the Stormbringer. Animatics are choppier animations. He didn't have too many animated ones. Is that from his new uh, album, Mandatory Fun? Tell me more about this wizard. Wizards have managed to tame creation itself. They wield untold powers and are naturally disturbed by the, distrusted by the church. Even the High Inquisitor wouldn't dare move against them openly. Athmoral, as her name suggests, is the wizard whose domain includes both the sky and the storm. The one you're talking about is fan-made? Oh, nice. She's put out a call for new apprentices, which is a rare event. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for many. Groves of unwashed, glory-seeking common folk are from all over the march are lining up for their chance. Not just peasants, I, Applerpunk, have also decided to apply. The competition will be fierce, but those serfs are no match. I will be the most powerful noble this council has ever seen. You? You couldn't put your clothes on if it wasn't for your servant's help. This is getting good. We can't let this go ahead. Not only is this he heresy, it presents a clear and dangerous conflict of interest. No, it should have been me, not him. In all seriousness, take the chance. Conflict of interest, how? Wizards answer only to themselves. Their power is unmatched, such that the entire kingdoms cannot stand against them. Even an apprentice on the council would be disastrous. Countess Applerpunk could use this magic to interfere with votes, or you for that matter. And we shall assemble the council. Cheers, your majesty. Please do it, it was fun for me. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, wow.
Here's the deal. I really want to see a wizard. By any means necessary. You hope you don't die? I hope you do, and that your, uh, your successor is a wizard. You can certainly die. Oh, this is going to be good. You're going to the Tri-Wizard uh, Tournament. <laughs> Tempted to go with B, but that would have been double rude. You three are being awfully polite to each other. By my honor. How will she keep up with, with her noble duties if she's spending all her time in the march with the, the wizard? And what if, ninth preserve, she actually passes her apprenticeship? There's never been a wizard on the council before. Never know, it might just liven things up around here. You have nothing to fear from me, your majesty. Always I had the... I always have the kingdom's interests at heart, even as a wizard. Successors can't be wizards. Yeah. I I like this group. Even if nobody else joins, I'm super happy with this. Count uh, Countess Applerponk sets off immediately on her journey to the march. I also love that in the game, Applerponk and Angels uh, hate each other, but in chat, there's nothing but love. Uh, I, the way I interpret it is canonically, like, canonically, you're putting up a front to, like, hide the secret love in the back. And Athmoral's presence in Brusseldorf attracts all sorts of visitors. Through the power of her latent magic, though the power of her latent magic starts to wilt crops miles around. Oh. My crops! Not the corn! You think Moosh left? There's only two people in here? Used to be four? Yeah. I half expect Moosh to be, you know, holding a baby 90% of the time. Luck is with us, my friend. The palace watcher in our pocket. They took our money gladly. The kingdom can barely afford to pay them a living wage. Music to my ears. Soon the throne will be ours. Indeed it will. But now we must plan our next steps. Kill the queen by lowering authority. Or control the queen with the threat of assassination by raising your military. Moosh has a kid? Congrats. Yeah! Three months old. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be the one giving that news. Yeah. Uh, things get easier after three months, by the way. Like, three months is kind of a huge milestone. Like, you should feel a little relieved. Okay. Kill the queen and place their own claimant on the throne. I, yeah. I definitely wasn't looking. Over the next few months, we'll have our troops infiltrate the capital. Disguised as beggars, at my signal, they'll gather the stone and storm the palace in the dead of night. We bribe the watch. The bribed watch will open the gates. Our soldiers will murder the queen in her bed and have you on the throne before sunrise. I'll be honest. I hate children, but my niece made me hate them slightly less. Like toddlers. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, look, like, 
I, I'm... I fully support hating children, as long as, you know, you're not mean to them. Like, and who's mean to children? Ruthless. I like it. But what about patricians and barons? They'll call us usurpers and rise up in revolt. Not necessarily, my friend. If Queen Buckshank's rule is weak enough, we can persuade them to accept anything. You love beating toddlers? Yeah. Fair. Me too. That's not true. I don't beat my children. That's not true. I do beat them, but only when they really, really deserve it. That's not... You know what? Get moving on. For the final stage of the Count's scheme, they must lower the kingdom's authority to two or less. Let's see. Is anyone still playing on a phone? Move back to PC. Angels. Okay. Now I'm going to throw in swing votes here. That'll give you the opportunity to, like, uh, vote again in case you fat finger it. Let's see. I want to see the ritual. What is the ritual? Just when you were about to give up hope on finding a witch, a merchant traveling through the capital from distant Tregerstadt tells you where you can find one. After a few dozen drinks, of course. Her name is Magdalene, and she has agreed to meet with you in a secluded grove just outside Tregerstadt. I can't pronounce the D and the T. I, I, I don't know how to nail that. It's in the march. Oh, hey. Regarding her, her for the first time, you know she is very much a witch. Thick, ragged hair, a toothy grin. The only thing she's missing is a pointed hat. You have the scent of the beast on you, your majesty. I see why you have come. What's happened to me? You've been inflicted by the Therianthropic curse. You've become a were creature. She sniffs at you. <laughs> More specifically, you are a werebore. To be cured, you will need to undergo a dangerous ritual. I can help you, but you must be prepared. Or, I can help you overcome the spirit within you, giving you control of your new power. That ritual is more dangerous. <laughs> Sounds scary. Uh, wait, no. Help me control my power. First, we must procure a number of rare ingredients. I will need a handful of her... Hero beats, starlight mushrooms, a live goat, a moonstone dagger, and a bottle of wine. Red only, please. How about a nice Malbec? Most of these things I can procure myself with time, but any help would be appreciated if you want to be cured quickly, especially with the mushrooms. Oh, I can't afford that. I cannot risk being found out. You must find these things on your own. You allow Magdalene to search for the ingredients and lie low. I really hope the word ending turns the monarch to a frog. Yeah, that would be fun. I wonder what a, a were lion goat snake is like. I forgot the name of the myth mythical creature. Lion goat... The lion goat snake is a manticore, or a chimera. Chimera. But a chimera is technically just like a mashup of any of those things, or any animals, I think. Kind of 
Chimera, yeah. There are also many snake hybrids, which are cool. Yeah. When you next meet with Magdalene, she has prepared the ritual circle in her grove. The goat is brought before the oldest tree in the circle. I thought it was going to take time. Then slaughtered with the moonstone dagger. Okay, I haven't met her. The blood mixes with the wine, which she bids you to drink before tying you down to a stone altar. I like where this is going. What about the mushrooms? Patience, your majesty. Oh, sorry. Patience, your majesty. Magdalene takes a mortar and pestle and mixes the mushrooms into the blood wine, creating a thick, mushy paste. The moment the substance passes your lips, horrible sights swim about your vision. I love it. The great spirit of the boar roars from beyond the trees. It's a beast covered in thick spines. Its tusks chipped and bloody. Clench my jaw. Pain streaks through your body as you thrash at the bindings. The great Thor spirit, boar spirit, roars in defiance. Then starts to fade. The last thing you see before you pass out are its eyes staring deep into yours. Well, are the croutons going to rebel? When you awake, the grove has withered and died. The ritual did not quite go as planned. I had to draw much power, much more power than anticipated. Your royal blood made things difficult. I also couldn't procure the magic mushrooms without your help. I so I had to substitute. You will be bedridden for a few months as you recover. Feel as powerful as ever. The spirit of the boar courses like fire through your veins. Now you are in control. Queen Buckshank is a were-boar and in total control. Let's see. You could save the rebel. For a time, it seems like the queens might win. Well, yeah. This has been an amazing game so far. I agree. Let me eat the bard now. Your Majesty, a traveling bard says she has come to compose a song for you. Not just any bard, Your Highness. The best in all the land. Sally Six Fingers, they call me. A song, you say, about me? Why, of course. In fact, I have the tune and verse all but ready. I saved my best work for you, my queen. All I require is a subject. What should I tell the masses of you? What would you like to inspire? Teach them to love me. Out of fear, please. I will do so, your majesty, your highness. Absolutely. Give me but a few weeks, and everyone within the Crown Lands will know of your benevolence. Pray. I need only but a small payment of 500 gold for the time. A discounted rate for one as esteemed as yourself. Pay you. Don't be silly. I'm the queen. I see. I see. I cannot work for free, Your Highness, as much as it pains me to do so. But you'll get it in exposure. You'll write that song now, whether I pay you or not. The bard curls her lips in frustration, but doesn't argue. A few weeks later, your advisors bring word from outside the palace. The bard has released her work, but with the opposite effect. Rather than a song about your benevolence, Word on the street is that she composed a tale of your cruelty and wickedness. Of course, it's become incredibly popular. Clearly, she has sabotaged you. You dispatch the sheriffs and offer a fine bounty on her head, but to no avail. Hmm. Alright. Well... Your Majesty, a letter for you. The Chancellor hands you a small tattered envelope. On the back is a seal 
you don't quite recognize, but you're sure it's from the march. Your esteemed highness, recently you hosted us when we were in need. You'll be pleased to know that we have been cured with the help of a powerful witch of the woods. Please accept this gift as a token of our gratitude. We will always be in your debt. And the chancellors hand you a small cedarwood lockbox. Inside are a number of gold coins and a ruby encrusted silver brooch. Oh, I'm giving that brooch to my wife. The brooch, an exquisite example of marcher fashion, is granted to your wife, Jane, while the gold is tossed into the treasury. Yeah. Okay, Angel's Glitch wealth has dropped to 1,150. But my treasury's up. All according to the anti-stability plan. Yeah, you just need to lower it by one. Uh, purple and green are fighting over authority over here. Uh, patricians need to get it to five. Counts need to get it to two. Pain. All right. Let's see. The schemes are going well. Uh, the barons and the counts could rebel. The croutons. Uh, let's see. Only, only counts for anywhere. <laughs> We're not really fighting. Appler is going to get me five, and then I'll get help them get to two, right? Yeah, that's the plan. Counts, if you can't get it uh, to two quickly, we rebel. Okay. I better crank out this air then. Your quest for an heir is finally complete. You stand before the council holding a small child in your arms. Should I die, I ask that my crown be passed down to? The council hall is filled with nervous silence. My, legit my, my legitimized natural born daughter. Oh wait, no. Sorry, it would. it's gonna be Buckshank the second, and so a son would work fine. And assembled nobles break out into polite applause. By designating an heir, you've cemented the stability of the kingdom. Let's see. And if it seems like the queen will win, then the croutons will rebel. We only have so many turns, no? Oh no! Rebel! Now hang on, this isn't me winning. It's close. Uh, so, uh, how far I have for winning. Now that I have an heir, we'll see if I achieved my farming goal. I'm not sure I have since uh, I destroyed the Baron's crops, which means I would have to choose a new scheme. Uh, but yeah, it's getting closer. I think you're still good for a little while, but I'm also the kings, so you don't have to listen to me. <laughs>